Well, what's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? Bruh, what's up, YouTube? I'm Rugly. Welcome back to my channel. You know, let's get right into it. Today, we're going to talk about this little gem right here. This recipe is called Black Jack. If you like black licorice, if you like root beer, if you like cinnamon, if you like mint, if you like any of that stuff, you might like this recipe. Like This recipe falls somewhere in between candy and cocktail. It's kind of like a happy medium of both. And the star of the show is this flavor that I picked up because of a recipe that developed made rip r-i-p this is salmiac it is a black licorice now it says in parentheses on this bottle salty um i don't know why it says that uh, i haven't researched salmiac specifically but i don't know if that's like a salted licorice or something but i don't get any salt from this flavor it tastes like black licorice and it's really really good because it has this really nice like sticky gooey texture um you know it definitely does not fall short it does black licorice really 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 well i really like the texture that you get from that so yeah i picked this i picked this flavor up to make a recipe the develop made and in that recipe i think they kind of used it as like a jaeger a jaeger note so that makes a lot of sense this recipe wasn't exactly going for Jaeger, but the finished product does taste a little bit like Jaeger if Jaeger was a chewable candy. This is a boozy black licorice candy, and uh, I think it's absolutely delicious, you know? I didn't realize that I liked vaping black licorice as much as I do before I tried this flavor on its own. Uh, I actually like vaping black licorice quite a bit. Right, so we got a good sticky black licorice base, and we're gonna spice that black licorice up a little bit. You know, it's kind of bland. It needs a little bit of pop, and we're gonna use two things to do that. First thing is we're gonna use like like 0.12%, so like two drops in a 60 milliliter bottle of rich cinnamon. This stuff is very, very potent, and if you overdo it, your mix is just gonna taste like cinnamon, but just a couple of drops in there gives it just a little bit of that delicious cinnamon flavor, that spiciness kind of on the finish, and then we're also gonna add a quarter percent of Flavora creme de menthe. So I'm not a person that likes cooling, culotta, menthol, anything like that, but I do like to add just a little bit of mint to kind of cool it off and give it that kind of like spearminty top note. It also sweetens it up a little bit. And I know that that is where a lot of that root beer vibe that I'm getting is coming from, that minty note combined with the cinnamon. So, uh, like I said, this comes, here comes the cocktail part. And the reason that uh, this got turned into a cocktail is it wasn't originally, I was just trying to make a good black licorice flavor. Um, I wanted some creamy, rich vanilla on the bottom of this recipe. And my favorite vanilla to use with candies is F.A. Vanilla Bourbon. So, um... <clears throat> Vanilla bourbon, bourbon vanilla. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a bourbon flavored vanilla or a vanilla flavored bourbon, but both are present in this recipe and is a very deep, rich vanilla note. Kind of just lays in the bottom of the recipe, gives it a foundation for all that sticky candy to sit on top of. And the last thing that's going in here, I would say that this is optional. If you don't really want to kick that booze up a notch, you don't have to add this flavor, but I really, really like it. And there's 1% of TFA Kentucky bourbon. It's just bourbon, that's what it tastes like. And um, it gives it that little bit of a boozy note, which is why I say it's like Jaeger if Jaeger was a candy. <sighs> Delicious. <sighs> that Riesling really helps it taste like root beer. So this recipe, you're gonna want to let it steep for like a week. You can shake and vape this, but if you give that black licorice some time to do its thing and really develop that texture, texture after like a week, this stuff is sticky and sweet and delicious. Uh, I used a quarter percent of Capella Super Sweet in there. You know, feel free to use whatever sweetener you want in it. I've got three milligram in this dripper, and then my billet box also has 12 milligram of blackjack in it. 12 milligram blackjack. If you use lower wattage things like billet boxes, like AIOs, things that have like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 more, uh, this is a really good recipe to use for that. It's low percentage, but it's also very, very strongly flavored. You get all of the notes at a lower wattage is 16 watts. You know, 
for a long time, <clears throat> actually basically from the beginning. As soon as I started building, I became a tank person and that was like all that I rocked. This tank, this tank, this tank. I have so many um, blotto tanks and I used to like roll every single one of them at the same time. And you know, well, this is why I think tanks are better. Uh, squonking. I, I hate the mods for squonking because they have to make room for that squonk bottle. They're frequently only one battery. And then you're like locked into using some wimpy single coil RDA. Eh. Or if it's two batteries, it's this giant honking thing. Like I don't like big mods either. So squonking is like a nice thought, but in practice, it doesn't really work for my vaping style. Drippers are great. They're just messy and like, it's like, okay. So when you're using a dripper, it takes two hands, right? You have to have a bottle of liquid in one hand and the mod in the other hand. Um, that's not ideal. It's also not good for driving. So you have to have something like this when you're on the road. But honestly, recently I have been using a lot more drippers than anything else, almost exclusively using drippers. Uh, two reasons why. Uh, first reason is that I have about three pounds of gear up there, you know, various atomizers um, in various stages of decay that all need to be washed. So, you know, as I'm going through this process of like, eh, I'm lazy today, I'm not gonna wash these addies. Eh, I'm lazy forever, I'm not gonna wash any of these addies. I keep digging through my vape collection and, uh, you know, like, oh, I don't wanna use that or oh, I don't wanna use that. Oh, you know, I didn't like that when I, I'm pulling out these things that I've had forever, older things, things that I never really gave a chance and I'm trying them again. And, you know, <clears throat> as a whole, uh, I think I tend to give up on devices a little bit too quickly. It's not unusual uh, for me to just put something on the shelf uh, after a few hours if my if my first impression of it was not great. Um, seriously, I can't can't use something that I don't like and it's really hard for me to keep using something that I don't like. It the same goes for flavors. You know, if I mix up something and I try it and I don't like it, I oftentimes just don't use it. So now, I'm not a complete heathen. I don't always just, you know, put it up on the shelf if I don't like it. Sometimes it takes days for me to decide that I don't like it. Like those things that are like, eh, I might like it. You know, I keep using it. I keep using it until I find a reason that I don't like it anymore. But um, I kind of fell out with tanks. Uh, you know, in the winter time, I, when it's real cold, like, like below zero, I don't think that tanks work very well. Um, you have to use a lot thinner juice and then, you know, so that it stays wicking in the cold and then, eh, you get problems with dry hits and you know, you just really don't have to worry about that. You don't really have to worry about that with drippers. Like <clears throat> I pulled out some of these like super old, like this is a 22 millimeter goon. And I feel like this is actually the best goon because like, I think the build deck is the same size and it's got those Phillips head screws, you know, I, I, I hate Allen keys. I really do. So yeah, so I got this thing out and like this thing is just banging. I think, you know, I didn't really have a bad impression of this one. I just didn't really have a use for it, but. You get such good flavor from this because it's, du it's a dual coil, but it's also 22 millimeters. So, you know, that you can fit some monstrous coils in this thing and there's not very much room left in there. So it's really, really saturated flavor and you can pack so much wick in this thing. I feel like you get 26 millimeters worth of Addy in 22 millimeters, it's great. Now here, here's a Recoil Rebel. It's, it's very similar, you know, it's a little bit bigger, obviously, I think it's a 24, but it's, it's, it's just banging flavor, like, things like this, they're so simple, you couldn't possibly mess it up. And again, you can fit so, so very much wick down in there. <clears throat> they just left all kinds of room in there. Leave room for the airflow, your coils, great flavor. I don't understand how people use, you know, tiny little single coil atomizers that don't have any space for wick. And, you know, you know, part of the problem, like I said, is that, uh, you know, I feel like you always have to have a bottle in your hand. With this, you don't really have to worry about it. There's so much wick in there. You can, you can drip like a milliliter or two milliliters worth of juice on those wicks and you're not leaking all over the place.
so yeah, that's, uh, you know, I don't know. My spiel on why I use drippers now, why single coil atomizers suck, and why I use nothing but tanks uh, for a long time. Look, look, if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn notifications on so that I get to annoy you every time I upload a video. Like, comment, and I will see you guys in the next one.